So <clears throat> I think we, we certainly talked about this in the, in the aspect of drilling and how you can use uh, mud weight to counterbalance the hoop stress, okay, which, and I gave you an example of the more circle. Um, but basically what this picture is saying is that, you know, here, uh, as I increase the pore pressure, uh, if I, as I increase the pore pressure, I shrink the more circle. Because uh, in, in the effective, uh, you know, so this is effective normal stress. So if I increase the pore pressure, I'm shrinking the more circle. And so you can actually have, due to the effects of pore pressure, you know, if you look at this smallest more circle down here, the, the difference in normal to shear stress is not large, right? Remember the difference is the, basically the diameter of the circle. So you can have a relatively small difference and still have slip if you have a high pore pressure. Right. <clears throat> And this is obviously, too, associated with induced seismicity, right? We, we see that when we increase, artificially increase the pore pressure through injection. And then you can, you can be in a scenario where you shrink that stress difference on the fault and you get slip. <clears throat> and so then just lastly, uh, we have this notion of a stress polygon, and we'll use it more when we talk about wellbore stability. But, um, you know, basically combining everything that, that we talked about pictorially, uh, then you basically can say that the state of stress in the earth, the value of SH min, SH max, and SV, is always going to be in this polygon. So these bounds are essentially those inequalities that were on the previous page combined with Andersonian fault classification. And so, you know, if you know the faulting regime is reverse faulting, you're always going to be here. If you know it's strike slip, you're going to be here. If you know it's normal faulting, you're going to be here. And this point right here would be the value where SH min, SH max, and SV are all equal to one another. So now we know something about the mechanisms of fault slippage. We know how to compute the stress on the fault. So now we should be able to determine if a fault were slip or not. Right? We just sort of put it all together. fun on spring break. <laughs>